tell me about the, your flowering rush problem. Well, you know, Aberdeen Springfield Canal Company uh, is responsible for irrigating like 62,000 acres. And uh, we do that with 200 miles of canals and laterals. Um, in the 50s, early 60s, we started seeing flowering rush show up in our canal. Uh, we suspect the source was the Snake River above us. And uh, by the time we got to the late 60s, early 70s, it was starting to become a real problem, actually closing off some laterals entirely. The, um, uh, it, we've been working for years uh, to try to deal with this problem. Uh, we've, um, uh, we've tried lots of different methods. So how have you dealt with it? Well, uh, you know, we've uh, originally we tried uh, dealing with it the way we were dealing with our sago uh, pond weed and our other aquatic vegetation. Uh, for many years, and that was mechanical removal. Um, we had stopped using mechanical removal for our, uh, our uh, large aquatic weeds like the sago, and, uh, but we were still doing ch using the chains to remove the flowering rush. Of course, that, that was a serious problem because all we were doing were to, it actually resulted in spreading the flowering rush even further as we uh, tore it up out of the bottom and those roots and pieces of plant would move downstream, sink, and start growing again. We had a real problem behind our weed screens, uh, where, the, uh, where we were collecting the chained uh, material. Um, where uh, chaining wasn't practical or where we had um, uh, just small patches of it uh, uh, blocking laterals and, and restricting our flow, uh, we were using our excavator with a ditch cleaning bucket and just removing that, you know, this, that, the material and uh, flowering rush along with it. That, that, neither one of those things are great um, solutions. Uh, the chaining uh, puts so much vegetation and junk in the water uh, and, and mud that uh, it, it makes it difficult for uh, water users downstream to take that water out and put it through their sprinklers. Uh, the excavator was a little cleaner than that. Uh, you know, we, uh, we didn't release as much material into the water and we didn't uh, stir up quite as much silt as the chaining does. Uh, but the problem with the excavator is, is we ended up digging great big holes in the bottom of our ditch because we couldn't see in the bottom to do a decent cleaning. Uh, other than um, uh, the mechanical removal, we've been experimenting for the last 15 years with various types of chemical treatment. Uh, most of those are surface treatments uh, late in the season. The, um, uh, we've had really mixed results. Uh, in some places we saw, um, uh, after a surface application of 2,4-D and rodeo with good crop oil, uh, late in the season where we could hold the water in a lateral, uh, we saw as much as 98% control the following year. Um, the year after that, it was all back. I'd say, you know, um, uh, to where we were once again almost completely uh, restricted in those areas. Uh, so while we got um, in-season results, or end-of-season results for the flowering rush, they didn't really carry over um, beyond a year. The, um, uh, we tried uh, um, various methods of uh, 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 dry treatment, fall treatment, uh, where we uh, um, uh, we'll put a, a systemic chemical on. Um, uh, we don't see a lot of effect on that, and of course, uh, so much of those uh, late season dry chemical app or dry canal applications um, are so much dependent upon snowpack and how the weather turns out. It's really hard to determine whether or not we had good results from those chemicals or not. And uh, quite frankly, it's it's just too much work for us to try to treat large stretches of canal uh, when they're dry in the fall and hope to have them ready by the spring. Steve, I remember when you first told me about flowering rush and the problems it was creating on your canal system. The flow restrictions, the how it grows, the lack of any alternatives, and what you told me was you were looking for solutions. Are you pleased with the efforts and the results of those efforts in developing the AVR on the Aberdeen Springfield County. Well, you know, I'm really pretty pleased with uh, with how your stuff worked out. You know, you brought that prototype down on the mini excavator, what, three, four years ago? 
and uh, um, and you basically cleaned my uh, about a mile of our eye lateral. Uh, we had uh, a serious flowering rush problem on the end of that, and a cattail problem on the upper part of the lateral. Um, and uh, here we are, three years and the third season later, last water season. Um, I was really impressed. We saw at most 10, maybe 15 percent regrowth, and uh, and what was regrowing looked to me like where the um, that prototype rake might have missed a little bit. And uh, but um, but we're still we have no flow problems there uh, after three seasons. Uh, and we're really happy with the results there. Uh, and then when you brought the production model down, the 16-footer down, and you, you did the demo for us on the uh, low-line canal, and you worked on our J-lateral, um, but uh, the work you did on the low-line canal two years ago, it um, showed less than 5% regrowth the following year. And of course, we've only had one year since, uh, uh, one water season since you cleaned it. And then we cleaned J-lateral midway through the season last season with your machine. And, uh, um, and it, uh, at the end of the season, we saw um, uh, no regrowth, and uh, we certainly had much better flow, uh, better than we've seen on J-lateral in years and years uh, after you cleaned it. And I was really quite pleased, especially with the 16-foot one, that uh, not only were you getting cattails and flowering rush, but uh, it was obvious that you were pulling up uh, a lot of sago, too. And, uh, and we were two months away from treatment on that lateral. Uh, and we ended up not having to use any chemical at all on that lateral uh, because uh, the, the cleaning that you did to remove the flowering rush got the other aquatic vegetation as well. So we're, we're, we're really quite pleased with, uh, uh, with those early efforts. Okay. What convinced you to purchase a, the, an AVR from us? Well, uh, you know, at first uh, uh, my board and I were uh, really just talking about contracting with you uh, to, to do our but to do small amounts of work here and there wherever we had real problems. Um, but uh, as, as we looked at your machine and the ABR and the combination of the tilbrook and the power grip bucket that you have, uh, and we started thinking about the, the potential uses of, of all of that package, uh, um, and when we saw the versatility of being able to move that rake in and out and around uh, um, head gates and near bridges and under main lines, uh, the, the, the board and I had no problem at all deciding that, that we really wanted uh, that same capability. And, you know, with the addition of the tilt rotator and that, that power grip bucket on the end of my most used excavator, it, it's increased the versatility of that machine, you know, many fold. You know, we use it for tree removal now with the power grip bucket. And the tilt rotator just allows us to, um, to clean and shape canals uh, from positions of the excavator that we never were able to do before. Uh, and, and then it, there's kind of an added bonus that when we use the rake, the ABR to clean the flowering rush and the cattails out, uh, we end up with a pretty nicely groomed canal. You know, I've gone back and looked at those laterals, J-lateral and I-lateral, after the work was done, and you know, the, um, we don't end up with those great big holes in the bottom like we used to get with the excavator when we clean the flowering rush out. Uh, there's a, a very nice, even groomed bottom on the canal, which I'm sure increases the flow um, in subsequent years just as much as uh, removing the vegetation. So. We, um, uh, uh, once the board determined that um, uh, that this is uh, something that's not only going to be really versatile for us to use, but hopefully over the years to come, will continue to save us money on chemical and let us deal with vegetation problems that we can't deal with with chemicals. Uh, it was kind of a no-brainer. Um, and, and then uh, with the addition of the idea that 
the AVR that we bought would be sized and designed for our machine uh, allowed us to customize that for our uses.